Hey everyone, how's it going? Aaron Rift here from NoDQ.com. Welcome to the NoDQ panel. I am being joined by my usual guests. First, we have the West Coast professor, good old JM, Jeff Meacham. We are also being joined by the greatest columnist in the galaxy. He is exclusive to NoDQ.com. You must go on NoDQ.com and read his articles because the man knows his wrestling. Virtue, how's it going, Virch? Going great, man. This topic's going to be a, a doozy. How's Question, Aaron. So if, if, if Virtue's the greatest columnist in the galaxy, does that mean we're in the NoDQ galaxy as opposed to the WWE Universe? Is that what that means? That is true. In the galaxy. All right. So we are the NoDQ galaxy. That's our fan base. I just want to know what we're calling ourselves. I like that. The NoDQ. Nice. Well, we used to be the NoD crew, but somebody took Well, we can't do that anymore, that. though, because, because, we'll, get, because we'll, get, we'll get sued, clearly. Yeah, we will, we will get sued for using the term crew. But anyways, that's totally off crew. topic here. Let's, let's not get off topic. Uh, we are being joined by our special panel guest today, Phil. How's it going today, Phil? Good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me on, man. It's a pleasure to have you on. And um, today's topic will be the worst WWE title reigns in history. Last week, we talked about the best title reigns. So what we do for one side... We got to do to the other, as DDP would say. Worst title reigns. I don't think DDP is on this list because he was a WWE champion. But some friends of his are definitely on this list. One of his friends is a guy who Jeff knows very well. One of Jeff's all-time favorites. One of my all-time favorites. And even though his first WWE title reign was arguably the best of all time, his fifth one was not so great. Of course, I'm talking about Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan's fifth run, I think, was really unnecessary. He beat Yokozuna at the end of WrestleMania 9, right after Yokozuna had beaten Bret Hart for the title. Hogan came out, beat Yokozuna in an impromptu match, and then Hogan was not seen on television again until almost three months later at the King of the Ring. And at that point, he dropped the title back to Yokozuna and left the company for good. So, Jeff, your thoughts on that Hogan run? And I think you would agree that that was his worst run. You know, it's it's funny. Even back then when I was still not really clued in to what the business really was, I looked at that and I go, yeah, that's my guy and I'm glad he's champion. But where the hell is he? I haven't seen him in three months. And all of a sudden he loses. And, the, okay, the way he won it was very controversial, very shady. The way he lost it, the way he jobbed was even more shady with the photographer. And it was just, it, like you said, Aaron, completely necessary. Yokozuna could have been champion from WrestleMania 9 until WrestleMania 10 had a good, solid year as champion. And the build toward that, the build toward Brett at the end of that reign was great anyway. But just the fact that he had been champion for the entire previous year would have made it that much more dominant, I think. Virtue, your thoughts? Yeah, yo I mean, Yokozuna was a great heel WWF champion. I know we didn't mention him on the previous video, but I think Hogan um, took a lot of that steam away. And um, you know, Vince McMahon. Let's be honest. It, it was, but the politicking, something had was going on there. Uh, it was awful. Might be. It might be the worst title reign of, of all time. Wow. I that, think. I, wow. Yeah. It, it, it just. I don't know. I. I. I, lo I loved what Yoko became. Still, even despite that, you know. But I think it took a lot of his steam away. Well, I think I think Yokozuna's <clears throat> entire reign was plagued with with instability because remember he won it back from Hogan at King of the Ring, and his entire reign as WWE Champion was built on two things: the challenge of Lex Luger and to get rid of the Undertaker. And both of those, he looked weak. Yeah, yeah. The the Undertaker match, he needed what twelve guys? What was the number? Something Jeff? like that. What was the number uh, that I, they built? I want to say it was nine plus Yoko, but it may have been ten. It was a lot of guys that, that had to help him win the match. and then of That course, had nothing to do with Yokozuna or anybody except Crush. And then SummerSlam ended in a count out. And then, well, yeah, seriously, that, that – okay, I, completely off topic. That is the worst pay-per-view match finish. Yeah. That, that, that did nothing for anybody. And Luger celebrated like he won the world Yeah, title. seriously, he's got the he, – he, they're playing the mirror. They're like – you didn't win the title. You didn't do shit. Why, why, why are you celebrating? Why? Yeah. 
So well, Yoko's, Yoko's, you could argue either way, really. I mean, he had think, a lengthy well, title run, but he really – did he have a really dominant title run? He, he didn't. He, he, Yokozuna should have been the most – Yokozuna should have been what WCW was for Vader. Yeah. Yoko should have been the dominant monster heel that rolled through everybody and then came up short at the very end, which he ended up doing. And even in the way he lost the title when he fell off the rope into Brett, that was like, huh? You built this guy for a year and he loses with a Jeff. loose rope? That would have been great if they built him up as like super unbeatable and nobody could do anything. And then it cut his own like, you know, bot, not botch, but his own mistake cost him. That would have been good had they booked him right. Yeah, I, I guess, like I just said, they, they spent the previous year or whatever, well, the previous nine months, him skating by. There is no way a 600 pound guy should be skating through anything. He should just roll through everything everybody one after another and it didn't work that way so i will say regardless of the length of this champion as much as hogan's fifth run sucked and started yokozuna off bad yoko never really recovered from that either so he's a, yeah. one of the worst also well what about what about hogan's um undisputed title run in 2002 do you think that was a good or bad run because i i think it was it was a nice feel-good moment but it really it wasn't very credible at that stage of the game, I think, for Hogan to be champion. And it didn't last that long. The ratings started um, dropping, and they, they got the title off of him right away. I think every undisputed reign, once Triple H won it, until Brock no longer was undisputed, was terrible. Triple H's run was way too short. Hogan's run was what it was. It wasn't even a run. It was like, okay, well, you're back, and everybody loves you, so here it is. And, oh, wait, you suck, so never mind. Undertaker, and Undertaker, <laughs> Undertaker had it for two months, and he was a dominant champion. But, like, for me, the Undisputed Championship should have been something that nobody could easily touch. Yeah. And between WrestleMania and SummerSlam, you had four or five changes. Like, that, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. All right, Phil, let's get your input. In your opinion, what do you think is the worst WWE title run of all time? From what you've watched, what would you say is the worst one off the um, top of your head? Well, I'd say a pretty bad one, uh, you know, about four years ago was actually The Rock in 2013. Yeah, I agree on I that just, completely. Just how they did it was was just piss poor. I mean, you, you ended Punk's long reign. Um, and the way they did it, you know, they just, he loses on the people's elbow, which is one of the worst finishing moves of all time. Thank but you. That's for another video. Um, yeah. And I guess one thing I would have said is if they were going to, you know, drop the belt from punk, they could have at least made it a triple threat match. What's the point of doing once in a lifetime part two? I agree completely. That's why I wasn't a big fan of it because we all knew it was coming. We all, we all knew the outcome of WrestleMania. It was obvious as day that WWE was going to have Rock win it for the feel-good moment, which was fine, but I think they could have done it under different circumstances. It, it just felt like Punk was there to put over Rock. Rock wins the title, and then Cena gets his win back, and it just went exactly as everybody predicted, just terribly predictable. And, and what's really bad is they immediately shot themselves in the foot at Raw 1000 because the Rock flat out said, I'm going to be the champion of the Rumble. And yeah. it's like, okay, well, we knew it was going to happen, so the, 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 the remaining whatever months of Punk's reign, it was just, it wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when. Right. And they did not even change plans. Keep in mind that Ryback was getting red hot, but WWE did not want to interrupt Punk's reign because Punk was going to be putting over the rock. So they, yep. they sacrificed Ryback there, and they, they backed themselves into a corner booking-wise by doing that Hell in a Cell match. I honestly would have done the worst Russo swerve ever, but it would have been the best one. Have Punk legitimately beat The Rock, then drop it to Cena himself at WrestleMania. That would have been awesome. Yeah, or the triple threat. I, I think the triple threat would have been great for WrestleMania. Well, see, I hate triple threat. I hate anything one-on-one. -on -one. You know me. I like one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two tags. I hate the gimmick matches. Like Punk versus, Punk versus Cena on a WrestleMania stage would have done, I think, even better money than Money in the Bank. I really think it would have. They had oh, a really yeah. good match on Raw, like right they before did. WrestleMania. Yep. That would have been a great WrestleMania main event. Or just, you know, in that case, you can argue for a triple threat just to change things up. Mm. What do you think, Virg? No. <laughs> You're, you seem to be in deep thought right now. Uh, I was deep just going to bring up, I was, I was ready to move on. I was going to bring up another one. Because, oh, like go I for said, it. The Rock, you know, it is what it is. They made, it was money. They did it because of the, the his yeah. fame and fortune. Ray yeah. Wyatt, uh, Oh. Right, and dropping it at WrestleMania to Orton. That 
this guy, again, he's probably been the worst booked guy in the company in the last two years with his talent and abilities, and they keep doing the same old thing with Bray. So they finally let him win the WWE Championship, and then he loses it in one of the worst, weirdest matches we've ever seen. Um, yeah, and the thing is, I still like Bray, but like I've gravitated away from like wanting to see him every week because they're booking him so poorly. So that reign got awful. Thoughts? I, I oh, go ahead, Aaron. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I'm I agree completely completely with what Virtue said. I think Bray Wyatt was a guy that should have had a good reign, and when he won the title, people were like, "Hey, this is pretty cool. He's getting his WrestleMania match." And then WrestleMania came, and we're like. What were they thinking with that one? Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't good at all. It wasn't the fact so much that Orton won. It's like, we expect that. Right? It's just Randy Orton. The way they executed that match with the special effects, it was just, it was just very, very... I mean, even Bray Wyatt, it was weirder than Bray Wyatt. It was just very bizarre. Yeah, so. that's when the WWE title really went downhill after well, AJ no, lost the title. I was going to say, I believe, I was going to say, once AJ lost to Cena, this entire year has been one cluster after the other with the WWE Championship. Yeah. Bill, you look like you had a thought on this. Wasn't the rematch for Bray versus Orton also not for the title? Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, 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 they built this huge match, rematch, and oh, not non-title. Yeah. Orton yeah. was pretty bad also from WrestleMania to when he lost to Mahal. Yeah. And, yeah. And just and just Ma Mahal, we're, we're, I'm sure we're going to get on Mahal in a second, but let me point <laughs> out before we get to Jinder Mahal is that I firmly believe he's been an effective heel champion the problem is is that he's been booked so poorly the previous how many years it's hard for us to accept him as the guy so all right well let's talk about mahal and jbl because they they sort of go together it feels like jinder mahal is wwe's recreation of jbl this heel champion that they're trying to build um at least in jbl's case he was a a solid mid carter and he had some credibility with the apa people saw Bradshaw as a tough guy. He did the new gimmick, but people still remembered him as this tough beer drinking guy that could beat up people. He had credibility. So in that sense, JBL's title reign was okay, but I wasn't a big fan of the matches. I thought the Undertaker feud was very weak. I thought that the match with Big Show, the cage match they had was weak. I was not a fan of the, the match where JBL lost the title to Cena. Um, so I wasn't really a big fan of JBL's run. And, uh, but then again, compared to Jinder Mahal, I think JBL had like a Bruno San Martino run. Uh, Jinder Mahal <laughs> has to yeah. be one of the worst WWE title reigns of all time, considering the fact that he was buried as this, this jobber prior to his title win. All of a sudden, he gets this massive push. And once he's champion, instead of having him win some matches, he's winning them, but with all the outside interference, and he hasn't been able to win cleanly one-on-one -on -one in a wwe title match plus when there's non-title matches he's losing cleanly yeah the the, the problem that i mean i'm not i'm gonna get a lot of flack for this but you cannot compare jinder mahal as a heel wwf wwe wow i just went my back wwe champion to uh rick flair and the WWE champion rick flair was a heel champion and he cheated when he used the horseman a lot but he also could get it done in the ring and he could win when he needed to win the big one. Jinder Mahal has not proven he can do that yet. So, See, Aaron, let's go back to the Yokozuna ring. He had Mr. Fuji, eventually Jim Cornette. JBL had his own mouth. Great promos. Jinder, nothing. The, the Sings don't do that. They're just bump monkeys. You know what I mean? Oh, you might have to edit that out. <laughs> but they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're spot, that's the same as a spot monkey. Yeah, that, um, that's okay. And uh, and that's the problem. So I wouldn't say JBL was a horrible WWE champion. I, I remember earlier on the previous video, I said he could fall somewhere in between these two yes, lists. Yep, yep. I would not put him on this list because of his mouth. He was great on the mic and he could draw heat. And I think he said Nazis in Germany. And yeah, he got in trouble for that. But that's old school heat. Well, Gender, well no, Gender's it, failing on all levels, in my opinion. Well, you can say the word Nazi. You just can't goose step. It was actually, yeah, that was what he did. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. What he did. You can't goose that in Germany. Or you just can't do that. Yeah. Yikes. Phil? <laughs> uh, the one thing I was going to bring up about Jinder, if anybody just watched SmackDown last week, you can just tell he's getting no reaction anymore. Even if he was getting boos before, the reactions now are just nothing. Like, and I remember <laughs> JBL would get a lot of heat when he opened his mouth. Jinder, nothing. Yeah. JBL got heat the moment that limo pulled out. Well, the thing about Mahal is it's just the, the very – 
st- stereotypical character that he's playing, yeah. and it, it's cheap heat. You know, anybody can go out there and trash the USA and say the USA sucks and get booed. It's the easiest thing in the world. And some people are saying, trying to defend it, saying, well, Mahal's getting heat. He knows how to cut a promo. You go out there and you say the USA sucks, people are going to boo. It, it's not like it, it takes a lot of talent to get that done. Um, Jeff, I'm not sure if he's agreeing with me or if... I, I'm trying else. to deflect off camera. Sorry. All right, Jeff is, go ahead. Go ahead. Go Jeff ahead. is trying to prevent this video from, from going down. Going down, down again. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. All right. Well, let, let's... Uh, anybody else have anything else they want to add about Mahal before we move on? Uh, just, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I think, like I said, had he not been so buried and not been the worst of the three MB guys, it'd be a lot different scenario for him. But the fact is, he's been a lifelong jobber, if not lifelong, when is he going to be fired guy? And now he's the top of the world. It makes no yeah. sense. Zero well, sense. Well, you know, let, let's see. If, if they put the, the title on Shinsuke Nakamura, let's see if, if you know, he's obviously going to be popular compared to Mahal. Right. But let's see what happens with Nakamura afterwards, and then maybe we yep. can go back and give Jinder some credit. But we'll Hopefully. see. Phil, any other guys that you would like to bring up in terms of really bad WWE title reigns? Uh, well, this one's going to probably cause some controversy, but I mentioned to you guys before. Uh, CM Punk's 2011 Money in the after he won at Money in the Bank. We uh, actually there's, there's, did bring that up. What's that? We actually did bring that up on the previous video that that one was definitely not as good as it should have been. Like one consistent consecutive yes. run. Well, you could put not only that, but two other ones that coincided with that all in this video as worst title runs because you had, you know, Punk losing to Del Rio, yes. which in turn I had, Rio's... I had Del Rio down. Yeah, in turn made Del Rio's reign look weak. And then you can also put uh, Rey Mysterio's one-hour reign or whatever. Bam. Too. Bam. Yep. 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 Oh, and then, a- and, and the fact that Cena <laughs> regained the title but had right. to share the status with Punk the whole time. Yeah, that was yeah, silly. Horrible. Horrible. Three. That was three all in one. Just terrible. Yeah. It's a terrible summer of title reigns right there. Yep, yep. yep. Yeah, Alberto Del Rio is definitely on my list in terms of bad WWE title reigns. I, I felt that that one, he won it at SummerSlam thanks to help from Kevin Nash, and then he lost it right at, at Survivor Series. So, you know. No, 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 not even that. He lost it at Night of Champions, regained it Hell in a Cell because of Miz and Truth, then lost it back again to Punk. Yeah, that makes it even worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, that he, was he was two he was a two time champion within three months. Uh, ridiculous. Phil, would you agree that when Punk won it at Money in the Bank twenty eleven, he should have had that until he lost it to the Rock? How what? many more days would that have made it? But um, I'm serious about this. Uh, well that would have been another year. That, so, that would have been, 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 been another five that. months. It would have been another five months. Five months more right? champion. So what was the point of yeah. Kevin Nash come in and you know, you know, they had the little feud with Triple H, but I mean, then Triple H went over in that one as well. So yeah, yeah. They, that was the point. Triple H, that was the problem. Man, well, and they thought I guess Kevin Nash could still go, and obviously he couldn't. No. What about Kevin Nash's title reign as Diesel in '95? Yeah. You know, a lot of different views on that one. A lot of different opinions. Now, on one hand, he had a lengthy title run. He won it from Bob Backlund in nine seconds, so it wasn't really much of a match there. Um, then he lost the title to Bret Hart almost a year later, so he had a long title reign. However, um, historically, he's considered to be the worst drawing WWF champion of all time. Um, and his matches were not particularly good, actually. There were a lot of bad matches, I think, in my opinion. His match with Bret at the Royal Rumble was was all right, although you had tons of interference. I mean, that match was just – was it Brett, right? The 95 Rumble. I, I honestly think that the only decent matches he had as Diesel, Bret Hart, King of the Ring, Bret Hart, Royal Rumble, Bret Hart, Survivor Series, and Shawn Michaels in April 96. And he was yeah, already – take- yeah, He's already champion. not a champion anymore, yeah. So of those two match, four matches, he was only champion for two of them. Right. So, it sucked. Diesel's yeah. reign sucked. If you take Bret Hart out of that equation and, and later on Sean, it, yeah. Yeah. it would have been it would have been a great Kali like. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was, honestly, they, they want so bad to push. They wanted so bad to push Kevin as the the new face of the new generation. But they had Bret and Sean. They didn't need to do that. Yeah, with, and even that Kevin. WrestleMania match, 
uh, with Sean was a was a big disappointment. Fans wanted to see Sean win the title, and that did yeah, not that, happen. Yeah, that was one of those early things where even 95, the fans started going, we kind of like this guy, the bad guy, better. Yeah, yeah, they were kind of, yeah, siding for Sean in that match. That was the one bright spot of Mania 11, though. Was that WrestleMania 11? Oh, yes, yeah. God. Yeah. That, 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 whole show, that whole show was crappy. <laughs> but even that was a big disappointment. And um, I think the, the powerbomb spot looked really awkward, too. It did. Sean landed like he was, like he was dying. Was all, was all wonky. It was whole, horrible. Yeah, that, that did not look good. And then uh, you had the, the match with Sid at the, the first in your house, which Ugh. was not good. And then the match and then a rematch with Mabel, Mabel SummerSlam '95. Yep. Yeah, that was. Phil, you uh, had your hand well, up a minute ago on this. I thought. Well, I was just going to say all. I think the worst part about that title run is all of his title defenses were fluky. They were all. Yeah. You know, there there was no definitive pinfall submission. It was all just fluky. Win. And and the problem is Vince's formula of feeding the monsters yes. to the babyface. Diesel is a monster. Yeah, like you can't <laughs> feed a monster and expect some great Titanic struggles. Like that big guy, the big athletic guy, should always beat up the clumsy ass Sid and the big old dude Mabel. That, that should be a cakewalk for him, and it wasn't. Right? Yeah, it just wasn't a good reign in my. But let's be on. Let's be honest. I think Sean had a lot of pull back then, and I think because of him, Diesel got that push in that spot. Yeah. I mean, he brought him well, in. Sean, Sean brought him in, basically. Well, well, the problem is, think about it. In 95, Diesel was going 95 as champion. He made it ended with Shawn Michaels. Shawn got turned on the next night. Shawn came babyface. Who could be your Kyle champion that summer? Shawn Michaels. Who did he lose it to? Shane Douglas for about this long. Who won it back? Scott Hall. The click was very much in control in 95. And while they were having a match with each other, when they had to branch out, they sucked. Yeah. I mean, they were in so much control, they demanded a lot of cash, and that's why a lot of them jetted over to WCW, if you think about it. Well, okay. that 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 That's kind of blown up a lot. I mean, both Kevin and Scott went to Vince and said, you know, don't you don't have to be there. You'll just match what they got, and I'll stay. And Vince, at the time, thought he couldn't match the deal. So, okay, bye. Yeah. I think Kevin Kevin still, was- though, still, though, going to Vince and, and, and negotiating like that, like – in a ransom type deal. Yeah, they, they had power. Well, well, had well power. okay, well, well hey, no, no. the ransom deals were the ultimate warrior and Jeff Jarrett, let's be honest. Well, that, that's the cream of the crop, yes. Yeah. I think I Kevin think Nash's, I, I think his title reign proved that even if somebody held the title for a while, it doesn't necessarily make it a good title run. Well, well, no, because you got to remember, you know, we, we mentioned on the last show that Hulk Hogan's one of the greatest other champions of all time, that four year run. But how, I and mean, they drew a ton of money. But if you look at it from, from the technical standpoint of that four years, how many solid, good outings did he have, technically speaking, as champion? Like Orndorff, maybe? It was really, and, 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 it was, and Roddy. Him, much with Roddy were great. But if, if, if you break it down between business and technicality, all of them can be really good or really bad. Yeah, it just uh, depends on what your criteria is. Exactly. So Hogan's run as champion was the best ever, business-wise. But, you know, problem is Kevin Nash, Diesel as Rennes champion, didn't draw business, and the matches sucked. So he was a double whammy. Yeah, so Nash is, I think we're, we're pretty much in agreement, Nash is one of the worst title reigns of all time. I think, I think if Jinder Mahal stays the course right now, he will surpass Nash as the worst champion ever. Yeah. Sid had a pretty bad run. I mean, I like Sid, but... Well, the, the, the problem is Sid, both of Sid's runs were a means to an end. Yeah. It was okay. We got to get the belt off Sean to build to the Rumble, and we got to get the belt off Brett to build the Taker. Yeah, and I just think of WrestleMania oh. 13, that Sid Undertaker match. Man, yep. oh man. Yep. Yep. I thought that that Again, was one of another, the worst. Another bad WrestleMania saved by one match. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the worst title matches of all time. So I, I think of Sid's reign as that WrestleMania 13 match being one of the worst of all time, and, and that's what really stands out to me. Yep, and honestly, if we're, if we're talking about the Undertaker, how about his first championship run? Six days. Yeah, I mean point. that that was uh, pretty much just done to build up that Tuesday in Texas pay per view, which was so bad because think about it: this guy went undefeated for a year, over a year if you count all the way to Texas, and he beat the great and powerful Warrior. He defeated the Fly. He turned Jake the Snake evil. He did all these great things, and he beat Hogan. Whether Flair or not, 
He beat Hulk Hogan in the middle of that ring. And then I, I get having to get the title off of them to get the Rumble built, but to have the Undertaker job out in less than a week just completely slowed him down for a good couple months. You know what I thought? You know, this is off topic here, but you know, you know what I thought was dumb about that Survivor Series match? Um, mm. You know, Flair stuck out the chair for Undertaker to do the tombstone, but Hogan's head doesn't even come close to the chair. I mean, it was just the regular tombstone where Paul drives the guy on his knees. It's like, which is so funny because even in Hogan's non kayfay book, he talks about that he had a real stinger. Oh. <laughs> like, oh, geez, Terry, really? Come on. Yeah. Ugh, but terrible. you look at that clip, yeah, like the chair, like, really had no impact on the move whatsoever. It wasn't near as bad as the Pete Rose tombstone, but it was still pretty bad. Yeah, but anyways, <laughs> um, you know, I also want to bring up the Big Show's uh, title reign in '99. Basically, Big Show got the title because Austin got hurt and. They yep. had to pull Austin from the, the triple threat match at Survivor Series 99. It was supposed to be Austin versus Rock versus Triple H. Austin got hurt. They had to pull him. They did the whole angle with him getting run over, and Big Show was the substitute. And uh, Vince decided since Big Show was the substitute, they were going to have a title change so the fans would be sent home happy. Um, but the thing is, Big Show was in the middle of a feud with the big boss man, <laughs> And that led to the Unforgiven match, which was not good at all. I mean, that had Armageddon, to be one of the Armageddon, worst. Armageddon, Armageddon. What did I Armageddon. say, Unforgiven? Unforgiven. No, Unforgiven was killing a hell bad. Let's, let's not forget <laughs> that either. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, it was, it was Big Boss Man, Big Show at the Armageddon pay-per-view. Um, and some people hated that storyline. I did enjoy the storyline, but when it came to them actually having to wrestle, yeah, not so much. And the thing is, it wasn't the main event. The main event was Triple H and Vince. Exactly. So it was just a... a a throwaway match, and, and Big Show really did nothing as champion. He was just basically in the background. And what's funny, when you, when, you, when you look back now on the Big Show's runs as WWE champion, think about this. He won it at Survivor Series, lost it in January of 2000. Terrible run. He beat Lesnar thanks to Heyman, the screw job, lost it to Kurt a month later. Um, the big gold belt he held kind of, sort of, for a little bit and lost it back. And then ECW champion, he was he was probably the worst ECW champion of WWE ECW, not named Mr. McMahon. Who would have oh, wow. thought a giant would have been transitional champion that many times? Right. But, and, and, and the fact is, and, and it's so funny, you look back now and Vince McMahon told him in 1999, WCW does not book you, let me book you. He spent the last almost 20 years now booking Paul worse than WCW ever did. Never. Ever. The amount of times he's turned face and heel. <laughs> well, the, it's, it, well, it's funny. We, we actually had a debate of what's happened more often. Me taking pictures of Mickey Mouse or Big Show face heel turns. It's, it's, it's like right there. <laughs> Jeff Beach and Mickey Mouse pictures. Well, Jeff, you, right. you, you mentioned Vince McMahon. What about his WWF title reign? Well, Not really a reign. Yeah, I mean, I mean it was But he literally... had it. He had it. He had it. He, he was the, He's on the books. He's Come in the on. books. Um, I, I honestly think, you know, it's just one of those things where – Austin got hurt, and they had to get the belt off him, and they put it on Foley, then they put it on Hunter, and then Hunter was already feuding with the McMahons anyway, so it just kind of built toward that. And it was one of those like you, one of those things where you never expected to see it, but even Vince knew right away, okay, I got to make this not happen anymore. He, he, I'll give Russo a ton of crap, but even Russo figured out in WCW, I cannot be the world champion. It's not going to work. Vince knew the same thing. He can't be champion long term. It was just for that that feel good moment, so Vince could say he was the champion, right? But I mean, yeah. how can we not say that's a horrible reign? I mean, think oh, about it. Was. It. <laughs> the thing, it, yeah. it was it was so much a non factor in the grand scheme of things. It's yeah. hard to call it a bad reign. It was just a weird circumstance. Well, on NoDQ.com, Vince was ranked the worst WWE champion of all time. Oh. So definitely, in terms of being champion. He would be at the bottom, and uh, the well, range... well, I, well, I mean, think about it. One successful win, no defenses, vacated immediately. So, in terms of that, yeah, he's the worst champion. But Undefeat. again, you go, but then again, you go back to Diesel, you go back to Psycho Sid, you go back to all these guys that had the legitimate opportunity to run with the title, and they fell flat. Yeah. Well, speaking of falling flat, what about Sheamus? He's a guy that. The company was pushing pretty strongly uh, right right out of the gate when he debuted in, in uh, I think it was the end of June 2009. 2009. Yep. And uh, he beat Cena. And the, the thing that sucked about this, 
if you're going to push Sheamus, at least give him some credibility. He won the title on a complete fluke. I mean, yep. Cena basically fell off the top rope through a table, and that's how Sheamus became champion. And then he lost the title right away. And then his second run, he won the title because of Nexus. And then yep. he ran away. The WWE champion ran away from Nexus because they were wreaking havoc, and the champion is too scared to fight them. I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of it. Phil, your thoughts on Sheamus and his runs as WWE champion? Did they have any well, redeeming qualities? I was going to bring up his last reign and, and the end oh, of 2015. Yeah, I mean that, that was just that was terrible. I mean, not not that I we needed Roman to be champion, but I think they were just once Seth went down, they they just they didn't know what to do and they just started doing whatever they could. I don't no, know. What they was, were trying. They were trying to defer heat off of Roman, and they thought Sheamus was going to do that. <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work at all. What do you think was worse, Sheamus's whole title reign or the League of Nations? Hmm. It led to that. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, all of it, one big ball. It was all brutal. Yeah, that one. Yeah. I I I forgot about that 2015 run. I know Roman won the title. Yeah, you're right. After uh, well, no, Roman won the tournament, and then Sheamus cashed in. Yeah, and then Roman won it back. I think the Raw the night after TLC. Now you know right. what we oh, did. Tater have right tots. Around, oh, tater tots. Oh, you know what you know what we did have right around then though. Tater tots. Roman snap. Roman snapped. Was it Raw or whatever? Where he it beat up TLC. Triple H and he. And then that Roman might have been compelling. He might have got some respect from fans from that, and then it just went away. Yeah, well, it when just he won away. the title, I had, to, I had to bring that up. When he won the title well, no, in well, Philadelphia, he actually got a pop, and that was the same city that booed him out of the building. It's yep, crazy. And, yeah, it's so, it's so funny you bring up Roman. I'm glad somebody brought up Roman. People, I think, legitimately want to cheer John Cena, and they want to cheer Roman Reigns. But they're trained in their gut and their soul to root against the machine the office has created for us to watch. So they don't want to really root for the guy that it's being, they want to root for. You know, I, I hate like the Enzo Amores. They want to root for the guys that you think never have an opportunity instead of the Cenas, the Ortons, the Romans. You know, all the Sheamus is all those guys that have been pushed through our throats, not up our throats. It's terrible. Yeah. Now, speaking of Roman Reigns, his 2016 run when he won the title, he lost the title to Triple H at the Royal Rumble, um, and then he won the title back at WrestleMania 32. So, uh, Phil, I want to ask you, do you think that that 2016 run was the good run, the bad run, or was it the run? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that was the promo right after he won the title. He beat Triple H. You're not a good guy. I'm not a bad guy. I'm the, no, you're not the guy. Dude. Oh, you're that was just guy. coming off a of horrible mania, too. I think. Yeah. You guys, you guys did a, a video with worst matches, right? I don't know if this got brought up, but Triple H and Roman at WrestleMania 32 was horrible. Well, we were all and struggling to stay awake. No, yeah, uh, we, we, we were at Webmaster right. Wade's house watching this. We, we were there the entire day. And by the time we recorded and Aaron had his head shaved, it was like 11 o'clock at night. We were all beat. Yeah. It was terrible. But anyways, and do you who, think that was a good run? No, who did Roman lose to? It was, the, uh, it was at Money in the Bank. Uh, Shane, uh, excuse me. Oh, Seth, Seth, right? Seth beat him because and then Dean passed in. Oh, yeah. the wellness violation. Policy, right, the wellness yeah. policy. He had to give up the title. Yeah, so that wasn't, you know, maybe if Reigns had several months as champion. He really hasn't had a lengthy reign as champion, even though the company's been so hell-bent on, on pushing him as the top babyface, you know. Yep. Because anytime he wins the title, people resist it, and then the company changes plans. And in that case, he had the suspension. So Ambrose ended up winning the title with Money in the Bank. And that was another disappointing title run, in my opinion. Um, you know, you look at SummerSlam with Ziggler. And that was just a complete throwaway match. And this is for the WWE title. It felt like two mid-carters going for the title instead of being a, a world-caliber main event match. I mean, uh, what did you guys think of that one? But wasn't it? Yeah, go ahead. Wasn't it like, so when Ambrose won, it was kind of one of those moments where everybody wanted him to win for so long and so long. And then he finally did. And it was like, okay, where do we go from here? Exactly. Yep. It was yep. very underwhelming. Um, I don't know what happened, but yeah, that SummerSlam match to me was just a huge disappointment. Yeah, Aaron, you say it's funny you say it like that. I don't know what's happened in the last year and a half. Like, no matter what WWE does, the the core audience is like, eh. yeah. yeah. And See, I with Ambrose, with Ambrose, when he became WWE champion, he was still the same goofy Ambrose 
And, you know, he's called a lunatic, and he's never really, but he doesn't really act like a lunatic. Yep. And this goes back to the Roman Reigns issue, and even back to John Cena. WWE's afraid to change characters, to turn a baby face yep. heel, to make it more compelling, to make people, you know, their shock moments are pinning Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, WrestleMania, and things like that. When I think, you know, Dean should have became a champion and slowly got cocky and arrogant and maybe turned heel, that might have ended up being a nice little title reign if you turned heel. But yep. Punk turned heel during a title reign, didn't he? Yeah. Yes, he did. Something. Yeah, it just yes, little things did. like little, just little things well, like that well, captivate your TV audience. Well, no, we mentioned that during the last video. The fact that Punk started his baby face and then he yeah. slowly turned, and he was doing mid card stuff as a baby face champion. Yeah. He turned heel. Boom, he's in the main event again. Right. Yeah, I think that a lot of fans wanted to see Ambrose win the title at the Survivor Series pay per view when they did that tournament. Um, yep. They could have done something there with Reigns and Ambrose and, and maybe set up an Ambrose heel turn, even though the fans would cheer Ambrose and boo Reigns. But at least it would have been yeah. something for Ambrose's character. Just felt like that, that title run in, in 2016 was really flat. Um, Remember that match, Triple H and Ambrose, that was it Fastlane before yep. WrestleMania? That people yep. were really – like you knew Triple H was going to keep the belt, but there were some you – know, people were really pulling for yeah, Ambrose that's there. the thing. Okay, so Ambrose – Lost there. He lost to Reigns all those times, you know, several times, more than once. Then he lost, lost to, to WrestleMania, WrestleMania. Yeah. to Brock in that throwaway match. And then he had that feud with Jericho. And that, that cage match they had was really disappointing, too. You guys remember yeah, I that think, one? I think, I think Dean has not had a solid, really, anything. I mean, even as WWE champion, he has not been as good as he was when he was U.S. champion of the Shield. Or when he had that match with Owens, that one was really good. Right, but that that's yeah. one that that's one bright spot of the last you know three years. He did have a good match with AJ. I can't remember what it was. It was like at a in the fall. So remember that match Dean had with AJ. That was good. Was it Last Man Standing or table match or something like that? The TLC AJ won a title. The it AJ might have been a title? TL. It was a TLC match, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Hey, we'll have to go look it up. Yeah, yeah. That was when it, again, was uh, again, worth, again, we're forgetting recent history. Um, yeah, yeah that, that's where I got to stump Jeff on trivia with the the, the definitely stuff. Yeah, you always you always did. Um, yeah. I don't say Dean's one of the worst champions. It's just the fact that we're in a time right now where everybody's everybody is so micro analyzed that if they do the the slightest little thing wrong, the universe craps on them. Right now, what about Brock Lesnar? Um, the 2014 run when he beat John Cena at SummerSlam. That was a, definitely a dominant way to win the title. Now, I've seen mixed feelings about it. Some people feel, well, he was a good champion because people could take him seriously. On the other hand, some people were upset that he was never around, that he was only doing the part-time appearances. So Brock Lesnar, good champion or bad champion, good title reign, bad title reign. Jeff, your thoughts? I think he is exactly what the WWE Championship needed. Granted, we as current WWE fans, even going back to the Edge era as WWF fans back then, we were insatiable. We wanted a title match. We won it all the time. But I look back now at the past and I go, you know what? The WWF championship, championship should be a special attraction. Defended at the big shows on the big stage. Not some throwaway match on Monday Night Raw or Friday Night SmackDown where, okay, well, this guy gets a shot because we're having a bad ratings week. No, you build toward that prize. You build toward toward the title and you make Brock come out and not say a word, have Paul do his thing. And then somebody comes out and, you know, is uh, right. I mean, right now is a great example. He's a universal champion and Braun Strowman is the only guy that's really making Paul worry. I mean, you look at, you look at Brock's runs with the WWE championship, the universal championship. He was always the guy that people had to work to get to, you know, it wasn't about the title being there every week. The champion was there a lot, but the title didn't need to be the title needs to be showcased on the big stages, the, the big fights, the big pay-per-views, the big specials. To have it, I mean, the problem with the Attitude Era and the Monday Night Wars is they were going after the ratings and they had to have big time matches every single week on both shows. Not the case anymore. They don't need I mean, the ratings are not as good as they were. They don't need to be. WWE is the guy. They're, they're the kingpin. They're the guys in charge. So I think Brock being the part-time appear at the big stages WWE champion is the best way to go. Right. I don't think Brock's ever had a bad WWF title reign. That's no, my I don't opinion. say the triple threat with Cena and Rollins at Royal Rumble was great. And the match yep. with Reigns was really good, too, even though the buildup I wasn't a big fan of with the, the tug of war for the title. 
But the match itself was really good to, to end WrestleMania 31. Uh, Phil, your thoughts. Good run for Brock Lesnar or bad run? That's funny. I was going to bring up the tug of war over the belt. Um, <laughs> no, it, I, I agree with Jeff because, you know, at first I, I watching it, I was, <laughs> there it is. Uh, I was one of those people that was like, you know, he needs to be here more. But it did add to just the whole thing of him. When he shows up, it's going to hit the fan. So, um, and, and every time he delivers good matches. So I, I don't, I can't put that as a, as a bad title reign at all. Well, it's funny though. People, people crapped on Hulk Hogan's run as champion because he never appeared on superstars or all American. Or he would show up for pay-per-views, but the, the storylines were building toward him getting challenged and it worked. It was a very successful formula. They're trying to do that with Brock Lesnar when he's champion. It's just people are like, no, I want a title match. Yeah, it's like, dude, it works if you let it work. Mm-hmm. Virtue, I, I, am I wrong there, Virtue? No, no, you're right. And, right. and the thing is, I was one of those too. I said, how often does, uh, you know, because it's the universal championship, is that why Brock doesn't defend it that much? Because he's got to go around the orbit. But, you right. know, I, yeah. you know, I mean, think about it. How often WWE's trying to make it seem, you know, more like UFC with Brock, and how often do the UFC champions defend their titles? You know, yeah, I, I, every, thing, every month, thing, every week. No, and the thing is, and the thing is, the UFC they know who they're going to fight in six months, so they have time to prepare. The yeah. WWE universe does not get that chance to get behind somebody for six months to challenge the champion. I think that's ridiculous. All right, any other any other bad title reigns that any of you guys want to mention that we have not discussed? Rick Flair's second run because of the circumstances involved. I mean, he he had he had to win the title back because Randy was hurt, and then he had the the ear the inner ear thing. So they made him drop a title, but instead of letting it correct itself, which it did on its own, they had him drop a title. And then he was gone. Well, I think that he was the title. He I dropped think that, it to Brett. He I think he to dropped Brett. the title because they wanted uh, he was a transitional champion. Because no, 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 no. No, the, the the original plan was to him to go toward a next big show, but he he had said in his book he developed an inner ear equilibrium problem during a match with that knucklehead warrior. I think he's warrior. just saying that to save face. I think they were just using him. I to- mean, we we know when Flair does gets the back body dropped, he always comes down on his side. You notice he, after that he yeah. could never come back back down on his flat right. back. Yeah, it is just really that weird. Theater. It is really weird that he never lost the title. He didn't win the title on a pay-per-view, and he didn't lose the title on a pay-per-view. It was really weird how that went down. Yeah, it was just very weird, whatever it was. But you know, I will say, for all the popularity he had, and all the you know the 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 the, the wagon was hitched to him, I don't think Warrior was a good champion at all. I don't think so. The '90 run. Yeah, the Warrior. Yeah, I mean, because think about it. He had that great match with Hogan, and then he had a, ma- a few with Rude, who didn't like him. And that Rude was trying to, you know. I liked the cage match. I liked the cage match itself, but the feud was not working because Rude had a bad attitude, so it wasn't working it. very well. I think Warrior had a. I think he had a good title run. I mean, even the fact that Macho came out at the Royal Rumble and set up that feud and let Slaughter win it. Um, I think I, Warrior gets a bad rap. I mean, yes, we know he was a bad worker, but I mean, he beat Hogan WrestleMania six in a classic title for title match. He did still have the feud, the feud with Rude, that SummerSlam cage match. And then, you know, he built Slaughter. I mean, that built one of the biggest heels of all time in wrestling. Well, but the, 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 the problem, with, uh, and I, I agree with you to a certain extent, Virtue, but the problem is they only built Slaughter up because they had to get the belt off Warrior back onto Hogan. Because Hogan was the American hero, and they were going through the Gulf War. And they turned Slaughter heel because of the Gulf War. And they were they, as soon as Slaughter came back, you could tell right away, even as a, whenever I was seven years old, you knew, okay, they're building towards Slaughter Hogan because Hogan's the American hero. War, the minute Slaughter came back, Warrior became an afterthought, yeah. I thought. And Warrior wasn't well, really he, that great of a uh, draw either because they, he wasn't. They, were, they were starting to worry, so they put the belt back on Hogan because they felt like yep. Warrior wasn't... Well, w- w- Warrior but was great. They never went outside of Hogan to try to draw, and that's the problem with today. They, they, they stop these reigns. They stop giving a, a push, AJ Styles, because nobody gets a long enough chance to become the big draw. That's because... Hogan did so big of numbers back then. Vince doesn't know anything other. Well, if you're not drawn like Hogan in a month, you're done. I'm serious. That's what it is. Yeah. You're Hogan right. set the bar you're too high. Hogan set the bar too high with the draw. That's yep. a very valid point right there. That's just my opinion. 
No, no, I, no, no you're, you're right, because Hogan built up for all those years, and then Austin came in, they did a gangbuster business for all the years, he was WWF champion, and then it's been a slow, gradual yeah. decline. Yeah. I'll second. give the Austin era credit, that was too, it was a combination, I mean, Vince McMahon and Austin, but it was both of those guys. Austin right. would not have been Austin if it wasn't for Vince's on-screen character. Let's well, but, Ho- but, but Hogan wouldn't have been Hogan if it wasn't for Vince building up the company in the first place. So you know. Yeah, but I mean, Hogan still did it against, you know, I mean, Vince was on screen, and that was a big deal at the time. Hogan just did it against whatever villains they threw at him. Yeah. Okay. Like, Earthquake, like Earthquake and guys like that, you know? Right. Right. Okay. So any anything else, or did we cover pretty much all the main ones? I was going to mention RVD, but we've heard Jeff talk enough. No, 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 no,